Hey everyone, welcome to New Bear. I'm Monique and today I'm introducing you to Gemma. Gemma is the fifth butterfly in the Kaleidoscope project. If you've been following the project, you'll know that every butterfly video starts with a section on how to tie your antenna. If you've seen this four or five times, this is the fifth butterfly. If you've seen this three or four times already, just scoot through to the section where we actually start working this particular butterfly. There are timestamps down below. There's also a link down below for the pattern. Now to work Gemma, you're going to need three different sizes in Pico gauges, assuming you use a Pico gauge, and one small joining Pico. Let's go. Before we start any tatting, I'm going to show you two different ways we can tie our antenna. Now that might seem a little weird since we don't have any butterflies yet, but I want to show you this first up because the way we tie the antenna will determine how much thread we need to leave for the tail. If you don't have a lot of thread, you won't want to be excessive with your antenna knots. You might finish up a shuttle with just enough for your butterfly. If that's the case, a small single wrap knot will work well. We're going to pretend that I've got a butterfly back here. I'm just going to tie a loose knot. On each side. I'm going to tape my butterfly to the table. Holding the end of the thread with your finger. Use something like a toothpick or a tapestry needle. I'm going to use my little wooden spike. Place that into the middle of the knot. Now we can position our knot wherever we want it to be. By doing the same thing with the other side, again our spike allows us to position the knot exactly where we want it. So we're able to make our antenna knots nice and even. If you have a little more thread to play with, pass the end through the eye of a needle without splitting the ply is ideal. Hold the thread in your left hand, about 10, maybe 12 centimetres back from the needle. Again, we have our imaginary butterfly back here, holding the needle by its tip. Back it up so you can pinch the eye of the needle and the thread together. Take hold of the thread. I haven't got enough there. Take hold of the thread from above the needle not the one down here, we want the thread from the top. Wrap your needle three times and then slide those wraps down along the needle, snug them together. This thread comes into the pinch. So if I can show you without losing the lot, that's what we have. Holding the wraps between your fingers, pull your needle through. And we have a three wrapped knot. Just gives a little bit more bulk to the knot for our antenna. So the antenna you decide to use will dictate how much thread you need, or rather the amount of thread you have will dictate which antenna you can use. A tail for your antenna. Start ring A with a count of nine. We're working five interlocking picots. 
Every interlocking picot consists of two loops with a double stitch in between each picot. Now, I'm a gauge girl. I love my gauges. They can be a little fiddly to use when you're working with interlocking picots. It's also unlikely that your picot will be the exact measurement of the gauge. And I'll show you why in a tick. Um, but yeah, I still like to use a gauge. The discrepancy between the picots, if any, is minute. So as with all tatting, use a gauge or not, it's completely up to you. So I use a gauge to get the initial size of my first picot. Work first half of the double stitch, just like you would for a regular picot. If you are using a gauge, hold everything between your finger and thumb while you remove the gauge. Use the pick on your shuttle to pull the picot up. This is where the measurement of our picot can change. If you pull too high, on, <laughs> not gonna let go. If you if you pull too high on your pico, obviously it's going to make that taller. So we just want to try and keep that the same. Now, instead of making the second half of the double stitch, we're going to make the first half again by placing my pick through the pico that I'm making, as well as back through first pico that I made, I can get them the same height. That's our first interlocking pico. We're going to hold on to the picots and work the double stitch. When you've got the first half of your double stitch, continue to hold your picots as you pull that stitch down. Otherwise, this stitch can drag your picots down. Work the rest of the interlocking picots the same way. Make the first half of the double stitch. Hold on to everything while you remove the gauge. Pull your picot up. Work the first half again. Pull your picot up. Work a double stitch. fifth interlocking pico, our stitch count is seven. We've already worked a stitch to hold our pico in place, so we're continuing with a count of six, adjoining pico, and three. Turning A slightly to the left, begin ring B with three, join back to 
join A. We're working six followed by three interlocking picots. Make sure you work a double stitch between each picot. Pico and two. Again, turning slightly to the left, ring C has two, joining back to ring B. Continue with seven and three interlocking picots. Remember that double stitch between your picots. Continuing with six, adjoining pico and three. Ring D has three. Joining back to ring C. We're working seven five interlocking picots with a double stitch between each pico. Finishing out our ring with a count of nine. Leaving our tail, we're tying a square knot on the back of our work.
and that is Gemma. I really hope you're enjoying the Butterfly series. Please continue to post your photos to my new bear Facebook page and thank you to everybody who has shared their work with me. I love seeing everyone's butterflies. See you next time.